I must to uh, give you um, a short message on how to stay fresh in a long term pastorate. And we have been really enjoying. And before that, I want to bring greetings to every one of you from India, to Dr. George and Dr. Hazel and all of our leaders of Canada, as well as the world missions. And every one of you pastors for praying for us in India. And we just thank you for that. Uh, let me just put my, this one. Okay, to start. Okay. And... Um, Yes, it has been a very tough time in India, but I'm not going to glorify tough time. I'm going to glorify God's time. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. And the Hindu government has moved in, and they are trying to, they have almost absolute majority. Only in the, the house of the lords, they are a little bit, a few seats they are lacking. Once they get it, and then uh, they want to change the constitution, that's fine. No problem, but this has been, we are seeing from the last 2,000 years. We have to preach the gospel at, the, at any cost. I want to thank every one of you this morning and thank you for your prayers. Especially I want to thank the missions also, World Missions, Dr. Hazel, for their generosity in many, many projects all over these years. Um, helping us buying the land and vehicles and putting up... Uh, constructions and so many things all over India it's going on and we just thank you and also as we uh, as we have been listening right here was please understand there is no change till we change is that right yeah. we are ex ex I mean, expecting a change to come on as just like that I don't think it's going to come so we have to change, and I have to change. I believe that God is changing us, as Dr. George was talking about, that, you know, two things, you know, we always find it difficult. And I'll just narrow down to one thing, that we are very easy, we are, we, are, we are able to identify the gifts of the people just like that, by the character. So the character is the one thing that God is really working on us. And, you know, I may, I may say that I'm in the ministry for 56 years. You know, I'm just, yes. Uh, yes. And this may be just uh, celebrated our um, 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 45th wedding anniversary. And God has been so good to us. And God is a good God and we thank God for that. And also last year we celebrated our, our Silver Jubilee celebration of the Victory Church in Delhi. You know, so that was uh, last year, 25 years. And we all started in Agra with $10 a month, that's all. 10 Canadian dollars. Your Canadian dollar is 50 rupees now. Your Canadian dollar is 50 times more than Indian rupee. So we started with $10. And today, God has brought us to 126 churches all over India. We are in uh, 16 states of India. And by the grace of God, all glory goes to God. Please understand, sometimes what happens is, when you look at India, you are only telling that, you know, Dr. J, Dr. J is doing great things. Uh, sometimes, you know, no, I'm not alone doing. I'm just a link in the chain of God. Hallelujah. We are all links in the chain of God. A lot of men and women, leaders, I mean emerging leaders, they're coming up. And thank God for the, the WhatsApp. You know, the WhatsApp, I use WhatsApp very much. And through the WhatsApp, I am able to uh, oversee and supervise and be in touch with my leaders, the national leaders. Because our structure in India is like this. Every state has a state overseer. In, in a short minute, uh, time I'm going to show you uh, a video clip, just two minutes, and then you will see that every state we have a state overseer, and under him there's many regional overseers. Then under him there are key leaders, then the pastors, then all the leaders. So the state overseers come under our uh, annual general body meeting. You know they are our main guys, counselors, national counselors. 
And then we have our governing body also, the policy making. You know, we make the policy, the governing body, and then bring it to the general body meeting, and then we rectify it right there. You know, ratify it right there. So right there, and then we have every district, you know, every, every area, we are doing um, our churches and establishing. But right now, there are a few things I'm going to share with you in the next 30 minutes that was given to me. So in this 30 minutes time, yes, there are a lot of things to share with you, but I just allot uh, two minutes for this video clip, and then one minute, um, 34 seconds for another little clip, and then the rest of the time, I'm going to. Could you please help me, Doug? Victory Churches of India, as a church movement, we are called to make an impact and to be a blessing where we are. We are not just called to be Victory Churches in India, but Victory Churches for India, to share the love of God with everyone around us. We are involved in a number of different ministries to reach out to our communities with the love of God and to inspire a change in our society. Victory Churches of India, as a movement consisting of many churches, has reached many regions of India. We are involved in planting churches, raising leaders and building life. It is our desire at VBC India to provide a spiritual environment so that students will go out as strong and mighty warriors. All over India, Victory Churches is making a great and effective difference for hundreds of children in the slums and villages and in the lives of women and girls in the rural and urban sectors. Slum schools and village schools are run to educate the underprivileged. Through many sewing schools, women and young girls are empowered and equipped for life. The Health Work Project is making an impact on the lives of many poor people who could not afford to pay heavy medical expenses. The Poor Feeding Program and the Drinking Water Project all help the downtrodden in many useful ways. Jesus said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. The blood of Jesus makes you a victor and delivers you from all bondages. That's why there is power in the blood of Jesus. We have conducted and also planning to conduct blessing festivals in many parts of India. These blessing festivals are organized with the cooperation of different local churches in every city. One or two things I want to touch before I give you a few points is already there. I may not be able to cover the whole message that uh, it's printed right there. But I'll just bring certain uh, few points at the end. I feel I should pray. We all should pray for ourselves. So number one was very interesting. Some of you know, some of the elder leaders, you know that in the 80s and the 90s, I've been doing big, big crusade because crusades... Okay, we don't use the word anymore crusade in India. Because we, we just call it blessing festival. <laughs> we just want to bless everybody. Crusade, the Muslims have objection to that. You know, they don't like it. They don't want another crusade, crusader coming. So we don't use the word anymore crusade. So you always, if you ever tire, write to me, say blessing festival. And some of the terminology we have to change. We don't use the word con convert or converting people. We use the word, people are blessed. Hallelujah. Because when, when we say right, thousand people are blessed. That means thousand people are saved. Wow. That's how we go. There. So some of these terms you have to understand. Because they are password for some of these uh, opponents of the gospel. So they're always, they have a lot of people working on uh, computers all over the world. You know, they have got yoga also into the United Nations. You know that. Yoga Day, International Yoga Day. So step by step, no problem. So we don't use those words. We just use the word that, you know, in all the crusades, the crusade that, I mean, the, black, the festival that we've been conducting there, thousands of people are getting saved. Not one or two. And 95 or 96 percentage of the people who come there are not Christians. They all come there because they have a need and they want to know. 
and they come and sit and listen. And we had this festival, the last festival was in a city called Varanasi. I'm not sure whether many of you are familiar with that word, because Delhi may be the capital of India, but Varanasi is the capital of the world Hinduism. And you have to come there with the fire that's burning, eternally is burning for thousands of years there, because every time they die somebody, you have to take the fire from there to lit the fire there. That fire is always burning, you know, because they believe once you put the dead body on the pyre and then you burn it and put the ashes into the Ganges River, the person goes directly to heaven. So that is a faith that millions of people are believing that one. So the last crusade we had was, I want to tell you that so many of you were expecting attack any moment because that's a headquarters. But then what I feel was our steps and stops are ordered by God. And we believe that we need to be led by God, whether it's a church ministry or any ministry or anything you do for God, you and I need to be constantly led by God. Sometimes what happens was our success in the past becomes our snares. Because, oh, I did it in the way. Now I can do it again. Yeah. That is a dangerous thing. You have to understand it. Yes, we learn, we thank God for what he did in our life in the past. But the one mistake that Joshua made, do you remember the one mistake he made? <laughs> he did not consult God when he made agreement with the Gibeonites. He did not. God was very angry about that because he thought, we did it, we can do it again. No. Our steps and stops need to be controlled and led by the Holy Spirit all the time. All the time. Hallelujah. You know, I remember the time when we moved to Delhi. And uh, so I said that I was conducting crusades. It's a passion. I know I'm very passionate about crusades and uh, festivals. But uh, now God is moving me into the church realm to plant churches, which is very, very hard for me. Because when I see 100,000 people, I come robust, you know. I become very happy, feel at home with the people. I swing them, make them, you know, jump and dance and all kinds of things. But, but starting the church is the hardest thing for me, you know. So we had our national conference in Delhi when we had just moved to Delhi. Okay, so as a first time we are, we are there, God told us to go to Delhi. I never wanted to go to Delhi. I just wanted to be in the rural urban area. Agra is good. But God said, no, you have to go to Delhi. So I just went to Delhi. And then uh, we had our VCI National Conference, Dr. George and Dr. Hazel, wonderful team. They had come there. And we all our leaders from all over India had come. And we had a big crowd. And they're all gone now. Friday evening, everybody went back to their places. Sunday morning, <laughs> we have our service. Just 50 people sitting. <laughs> in an auditorium of 375 people. So Dr. Hazel asked one question. So Jay, this is your church. <laughs> Only 50 people were there. You see, sometimes as we have been hearing it, certain things, you catch it. Is that right? We don't learn it. That one question struck me in my heart. I look at that one. 50 people sitting there. And then, Dr. George is taking me around the city of Delhi, going around, Jay, show me some auditorium. I want to see that one. I don't know what was in his heart. Now I know what was in his heart. He's taking me, I'm taking to this. I'm reluctant to take him to any auditorium. I don't want. He, why he wants me to take to auditoriums? I do not even have members here in Delhi. But he's just telling me, let's go, let's go here and there. Let's see that one. Maybe that he looked at my reluctance and he asked me, Jay, tell me how many people you want to have in your church? I said, 50. <laughs> oh, Jay, he stopped looking for auditoriums. <laughs> Maybe he was ready to just pay for one full auditorium for a whole year. I don't know. He could have done it. But then later I realized 50 came just like that. Then 100 came just like that. Sometimes what happens was, we limit ourselves. Is that right? 
we limit ourselves. We always say, nothing can work. This is, the, this is the thing I'm always hearing from all over India. Oh, it works in Madra Chenna. It works there. It works here. It will not work. No. God can work anywhere. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to encourage every one of you today is how I can keep myself or put new flame on my soul, keep my f- flame burning. How can I do that one? When I was thinking about it, yes, I have some other points. But you know, the Caleb spirit came to me. 45 years, this man is holding on to the vision of God. And you need to understand, 45 years was not the time of catwalk. It was a very hard time. All his friends, all the 12 spies, you know, 10 of them are rebelled. And they're just paying a heavy price. How could he keep that vision burning in his heart and not becoming a burnout? And if you look at the, I mean, there not much is given uh, about Caleb. But the only thing God talked about Caleb was that he had a different spirit. And I want to just bring that back to the same place where Pastor Lawrence was leading us. That we need to be full of the Holy Spirit. Is that right? Because at the end of the day, you know that what's happening there. Let me make this statement. I made this statement. Then you know, I, I explained this also to Dr. George and Dr. Hazel also. It's a very wonderful s- statement. What brought you from there here will not take you to the next level. You need new revelations. You need new re- relationship. And you need new resources. Let me explain this. Don't get me wrong. It's not that I'm not telling that give up everything. No. Because if I see in my life, I'm going to talk from my heart. I'm not going to just say something which I have not gone. You see, if I just stand here on this stage, I can only pull you up to this stage, this height. I cannot take you to this height because I'm only standing right here. So we can never take anybody to a level where we have not gone. We can only, so I'm only sharing it, sharing with you. Because we need, you know, some of uh, Lizzie's, I'm sorry that Lizzie's unable to come because of her her leg, you know, there's fractures to fractures. And so she couldn't make it. But uh, she comes from a wonderful family. She comes from a wonderful family. All uh, her sister's our pastors, they have their own uh, ministries they're doing. We have got nothing to do with them. Some of them are having 1,600 churches. Some of them are having so many things. And, and one of her sister, Lizzie's sister, is having a church of uh, 10,000 members right now. Right now, 10,000 members. And they are building um, a very, very big auditorium. They just uh, purchased 30 acres of land. So I asked him. He always ask. I'm willing to learn from anybody. Age means nothing to me. Hallelujah. Experience means nothing to us. We want to learn. We want to turn all of our failures into our success. Amen. If we can learn from our failures, we are making use of everything. Praise God. So I asked him a question. How did you, you know, I mean, how can I bring church growth or something like that? He, t- he told me like this. Uh, he's my co-brother. He has married Lizzie's sister, but he calls me uncle. <laughs> you know. So he said, Uncle, on every stage of growth, there's a spiritual battle. At every stage of the church growth, there's a spiritual battle. So we need to be fully spiritually equipped for that. And that comes right on our knees. Without this, it's not going to work. And the, and the demonic forces. Now, let me tell you another thing also. What happens was, as you are leading your ministry, you are leading everything there. If the devil cannot take you right on, you know what he will do? He will divert you. Diversion. Yes. Di- yeah, divert you. You ought to listen to me two, three times, you know, so that you can get the correct word. <laughs> I, I, I think I'm speaking English, you know. <laughs> But I found out in the Google, they have another English called Hinglish. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I am in between Hinglish and English. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he will divert you. Diversion. Spirit of diversion. So, 
you are focused on this one and the devil knows that you are going to put all your energy everything into this then he'll give you another project now that's what god wanted you to do now you are doing this thing. this is the problem of many many leaders of god all over the world i want to tell you because we don't need to stay focused on one thing do one thing and do it excellently hallelujah i always take this look at these lights right here right above us you can read it but it just keep on focusing the light it become a laser beam and with the laser beam you can cut cancers this light if you stay focused if you keep focused you take the magnifying glass what does it do it just mobilizes all this spread of light rays of light bring to one point one place underneath you can burn it can set a fire and the enemy knows that that's why he always diverses we want to do this one and that's one of the reason that god is really you know talking to us don't get diverted so when we gave up the full crusade thing the the the, the festivals thing in the 80s and 90s and god said don't say it's a failure or you misused your time just to say it's a season <laughs> it was a season so i did this the next season is church planting because i look at it in this way I, yes i i'm just doing all this crusade but of course nowadays i raise this crusade that we do is totally different this festivals because we ourselves our leaders they go and organize our victory leaders they go and organize and they carry the dna of victory and we want to plan churches after every festival there so now we raise jake more there we raise daniel lepcha there we raise tony there and all of them are watching and now i am what i am doing is three days festival i will come only one day and two days you have to preach you cast out the devil you raise many people so the point that i'm making it for a long time you know we need to be monitored by the holy spirit all the time are led by the holy spirit somebody said like this those who lead others must be led if you don't lead if you, if you don't have anybody to lead you that is not going to be i also feel very strongly in our day that we must have friends you know the husbands must have friends the wives must have friends and we must listen to others also not to the same people but some you know friends who can talk into our life hallelujah so look at the caliph spirit and um, you know this one i don't need to give you any verses and i remember uh, let me just go point the time is running hallelujah micah chapter 5 verse 7 micah chapter 5 verse 7 and the remnant of jacob shall be in the midst of many people as a dew from the lord as a showers upon the grass that tarrieth not for man nor waiteth for the sons of men the remnant of jacob shall be in the midst of many people as a dew from the lord i want to just say that one how we can be a dew for others if we don't have dew in our life because it's a dew that gives freshness to the flowers you all know that is a dew that gives freshness so we need to have freshness in our life what happens was i mean i have found out crusade and conducting crusade is the most easiest one and being a pastor is the hardest one because you cannot preach the same message again you have to preach a new message every time and you have to lead it's very hardest one so we need god in our personal life and then after you preached some people will always come and say some comment against you and that's not very good and encouraging words they say they come and say all kinds of pastor you should have done like this you should have done like this so such a discouragement for us so how do we keep our spirit because what happens was if we become frustrated then we pick up the spirit of frustration and that's not going to help us so let me just go to the first point very quickly the, I, i just put it as out of serving the people in humility but it's only the, the main point is humility we need to learn to serve people in humility 
and if you look at that word that jesus humbled himself even to the death on the cross of calvary humility many a time i find it is very hard for people to humble themselves especially leaders why well, have done this much but look at uh, moses single handedly he brought down the powers of uh, egypt is that right single handedly he divided the red sea everything he did single handedly but when jethro his father in law came and told him what are you doing you are going to wear you out and the people he didn't turn and looked at him and said what are you talking you never brought you never divided the red sea <laughs> you never brought down the powers of egypt i have done it and you come and advise me no sometime our success in others no success in others when you just listen to wise counsels what all we need yes there was a small city in the bible and a big army came against it and there was an old man there and he delivered the city by his wisdom and nobody bothered for him <laughs> just by wisdom the city is saved you know I, i hope that you know the word it is in the bible so we need the wisdom of god you know humility and i believe that is a strength in our life and i feel i'm i'm experiencing it in my life is that when we humble ourselves and god is going to lift us up and not just the way you're standing there and preaching about put that in personal life or we because people can find out whether we are really humble or whether we we are operating in the spirit of arrogance they know it very clearly sometimes for leaders you know i have to always humble myself god keep me i remember that time the great man of god billy graham conducted his crusade in chicago million i mean thousands of people accepted the lord and the university so many young people gave their hearts and then i i also read that in his magazines you know in those days was that he and his beverly shah and cliff barrow they are all just there in that little garden somewhere praying and he's kneeling down and saying god please trust me god you trust me i don't want to take your glory you trust me god because what happens is when we do something great we just get puffed up a little bit and that becomes a area but the devil comes inside so he's looking for a gap to come inside anything that happens so humility and in order to keep ourselves going we humble ourselves god and look at i mean the the, the difference between king saul and king david when king saul could not get that land for himself and then immediately you know he just he looks to his wife or whatever but when you look at david when nathan comes and tells you are the person he crumbles see that is what i'm trying to say that point when god speaks to us in meetings like this when god speaks to us god please speak to me i have not come here just to sit and enjoy the fellowship i have come here to learn something god i have come all the way from my place to learn something to just take just you know tap into the resources of men and women of god who have gone through me i'm not an expert in church growth please understand my church in delhi well i always give people to other churches i started eight churches in delhi my church is right now is a, is a 500 members you know i'm not sure whether doug will be able to show that pictures otherwise don't worry about is it okay just to show that one picture you know just a glimpse of my church but then i so i'm not an expert of a church church growth i'm believing for it but i'm willing to learn i am willing to learn humility so that is my church right there in delhi right now we are to go for a bigger place it's growing and i just want to and this is the second point i'm just running through all these things humility and one one point i just want to talk to you about um, humility is i want you to look at the examples of paul very quickly example of paul and his humility in ad 59 you know that comes in 1 corinthian chapter 15 verse 9 1 corinthian uh, 59 in ad 59 he considers himself as the least of the apostles okay 
And in AD 64, that is Ephesians chapter 3, 8, he considered himself as the least of the saints. See, least of the apostles, and after one or two years, least of the saints. And um, in AD 65, that is 1 Timothy 1, 15, he considered himself as a chief of the sinners. You see how his humility is growing. I was chief of apostle, least, least of saints. Now I'm the chief of, I believe that God is speaking something to us. Hallelujah. Pastor Terry, that you have to just tell me when, I, when my time is coming somehow. Yeah, because I, I punched 45 minutes, but then it's a 30 minutes, I had to run quickly. So please help me in this one. So I feel, I feel that, you know, we as leaders of God, if we can, you know, keep ourselves humble, and that is one of the ways where God can really keep us going. Hallelujah. Point number two, I just written as art of being flexible. And I also mentioned Oliver Goldsmith, she stoops to conquer. It's a very interesting novel, but uh, you can read it. Do we know the dynamics of stretchability? I remember some time back, Dr. George was showing this also. Rubber bands work on the same principle. A continual stretching of it keeps it flexible. If we leave it alone for a period of time, it becomes stiff and breaks very easily, even with a little pressure. The dynamics of rubber bands, the rubber bands the ladies put on their hair, you always keep it, you know, you're stretching it out. And God is stretching you and me all the time. Is that right? Through our families. Sometimes through our wives. Through our husbands. Yeah. I'm talking. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking practically. <laughs> through our friends. Through our leaders. And then if, if, if our emotional quotient is not steady, then we are going to break. Not only totally intelligence quotient, IQ. But you ought to go for your EQ also. Our emotional question, are we able to stand all these things? Because misunderstanding can come at any moment. You know, then when that comes, are we flexible? Are we flexible? No wonder CN, CN Tower, Toronto you call it CN Tower. It can move six meters this way, that way. Doesn't, we can't see that, but that flexibility is there. Because a high wind can come. So it is able to move six meters. That flexibility we need to have. That is another way of keeping our fire burning in us. Praise the Lord. Otherwise, you know what? We'll just shut down everything. Kick it out. That's the end of my ministry. Go. You know, you go north, I go to south. No. That is not the way. We just keep on going because we have a mandate of God upon our life. You know, so the flexibility is very important. You, you can read all those things. I'm just running through. And my third point was handling, art of handling. Problems will come. Many things will happen suddenly. But then how are you going to handle? If you look at Hebrew chapter 12 verse 1. Yes, we know that that verse always we caught. Why? Because the sin that besets us so easily. Is that right? We are all very famous, you know, we're familiar with the word. But just see the word before that, in that verse. Hebrews 12, verse number 1. Just before that, lay aside every, come on, you look at that one. Lay aside every, wait, wait. That wait is not sinful. <laughs> that wait is not sinful. The next one is sinful. The sin that besets us so easily. If you take too much of weight upon you, which is not designed by God, you are going to slow down. One of, one of important things that I'm just learning in my life, I'm learning to say no. <laughs> Otherwise, I am not going to fulfill what God has called me. Well, you know, many years ago, um, you know, I was in a one, one, one church. And um, the, a preacher was there. I think uh, some prof, prophet from states. We are all there. All the international leaders come. We are all standing one line, two, three like this. 
and I was not contacting him at all. I'm not looking at him because I know that if I looked at him, he'll tell me a prophecy, <laughs> you know. So I didn't want to look at him. I didn't want to go to the front row. I'm standing on the third row right there. And he's right here. And he's praying for the friends, uh, people from Zimbabwe and uh, uh, somewhere from Sri Lanka, even um, our uh, friend from Sri Lanka. He was there. So many people were there. And I'm just closing my eyes like this. Suddenly out of a blue, you know what he said? You Indian brother, you Indian brother, please come here. I went there. You know what he said? The Lord is telling, at this rate, you will not fulfill the assignment I have got for you. At that time, I am at the zenith of my crusades, conducting crusades after crusades. He said, decentralize, decentralize, decentralize. Three times he repeated that. Decentralize. And then he said, Leave a legacy. Leave a legacy behind you. And then the fourth thing he said was, there are a lot of young lions around you. You teach them how to hunt. <laughs> Hallelujah. Change the, thank God for the church. And literally it was Dr. Banner's church. I think, you know, in Memphis. Brett Banner church. And they recorded that one and gave that recorded message to me. I went back home, listened to that again and again, again and again. I said, time has come for me to put an end to these organizing crusades. A time to go into the church planting. And today you see how many churches have come. Please understand, we need to learn how to handle the situations. Otherwise what happens was anything can tip you off and you will not be able to achieve what God has called you to plus you lose interest in vision, mission. Sometimes you're going on counseling, counseling, counseling everybody with all kinds of problems. At the end, you think the whole world is full of bad people. You know, we think like this. We don't want to do it. No, that can burn you out because you are taking too much of things on ourselves and it's going to affect our body. Affect our strength, our stamina. Please understand, friends. I want, I'm just sharing with uh, something. If, I, if I'm going to come closer to my uh, five minutes closer, three minutes, good. I'm going to just run through, hallelujah. The, uh, the next point is working with the strong people. Because why I took all the point? These can demoralize you. This can bring your passion down. At the end, you know, you know, working with uh, strong people is not an easy joke. One time I'm preaching in a place. Today I'm going to talk to you from Luke chapter, chapter 8, verse 9. And there was a guy sitting there. Why not 10? <laughs> I'm telling, I'm going to talk to you from Luke chapter 8, verse 9. And he's telling, why not 10? <laughs> What do you do? People are always there like this. But please understand it. You need oxen in your manger. If you want more harvest. If you think that I don't want any harvest. I want my manger clean. Keep it yourself. Hallelujah. And just pray it. Keep it neat. But you know working with the strong willed people. Is very, very hard, but we need God. Hallelujah. And we need strong people. So much I plan to share with you, but I couldn't deliver. But God is, you know, on our side. Please understand. We need all sorts of people. Why? Let me tell you. In the three minutes, I'll, I'll tell that. You look at Elijah for one minute. Okay. <laughs> look at Elijah. Go and see whether there is anything there. And this guy runs his servant, comes back. No, nothing is there. Second time, third time, fourth time. He comes and tells, no, nothing is there. You need people who say yes for yes or no for no. Because you cannot, we cannot run a ministry with this second fiddle. You understand my point? People always play the second fiddle. No, we need people who will tell us right on the face, Pastor, I just respect you, but I think that project which you are going to take up is not going to work. Please think about it. 
that kind of people alone we need in order to go to if you want to run before the chariots you need people who are strong enough hallelujah can you say hallelujah for that you need people who will come and tell you and stand before you i love you pastor everything there but what you are doing is not going to bless our church when you say that when you have people like that your church is going to grow well, let me close it with a please give me half a minute the presence of the lord that will keep us going in your presence is fullness of joy if your presence is not going before me forget it don't carry me from here i'm not going to come i want you god i want you i believe that every one of us here we need god's presence in our life because if you are not here how do we know that we can win this war i believe that this time for all of us for all of us you know just look into our heart am i in the presence of god is god talking to me or i'm just running this because i heard it long time back friends if we can some of the points only i gave to you if we can just keep ourselves because his fire must be burning in us hallelujah give a big clap unto the lord thank you